An uncharged conducting ball of radius r is placed in an external uniform electric field like this. So obviously some charge will be induced on this ball because of the field. So positive charge will come on the right side and negative charge will come on the left side. So this charge density is given as sigma is equal to sigma naught cos theta. So you can see that as you move up this cos theta will increase and the value of charge density will decrease and it will become zero here. So maximum charge will be accumulated here of positive and negative charge will be accumulated here and rest of the sphere also charge will be accumulated. It will be zero on the top and zero at the bottom. So we have done such problems before. So here we, have, we are directly going to use this result that sigma in such cases is sigma naught cos theta. So with that given, we need to find the force acting on the induced charge of the same sign. So needless to say, if you take the total ball, the net force will be zero. So we'll only consider the right half of the ball because the right half will have the positive charge. So we'll find the force on the right half of the ball. So to do that, we are going to use the concept of electrostatic pressure, which we studied in problem number 3.68. So we'll take a small element and we'll calculate the force on that element. This element is at an angle theta. So we know what is the charge density there. So if we know the charge density, we know what is the small force by multiplying it, the area by electrostatic pressure. So small force DF on this ring element is electrostatic pressure into area. So pressure is sigma square by two epsilon times area which is let's say ds. So don't think here that this electric field will also put pressure or something. So let's discuss that first. So small force df on this is dq into e. dq is sigma into ds and e is sigma by 2 epsilon. So this is not this E, this is just a general equation that force on a charge is dq into E. And E in our case is sigma by 2 epsilon. We have proven it before. So in this question, E is the total field due to external uniform field and the internal rest of the spherical surface both. So whatever charge distribution is in the rest of the sphere except the ring element, that whole charge distribution plus electric field, this electric field, the net effect of that is sigma by two epsilon, which will cause the force on this ring. So it's already taken into account. So net force on the ring is that pressure formula into area. So automatically this charge density will adjust itself that this electric field will be taken care of. So in previous problem 3.69, we had a uniformly charged sphere so there was no external electric field. So there sigma was spread in a different way. So here because of the electric field, sigma is spread in a different way. And it, it spreads in a way that the net electric field inside becomes zero and just outside it becomes sigma by epsilon. And on the element itself, the electric field will be sigma by two epsilon. So once more, when we have a conductor, just outside the conductor, doesn't matter where you place the conductor, the field is always sigma by two epsilon. And inside the conductor, field is always zero. If you take an element, the electric field acting on the element itself is sigma by two epsilon. So all these are universal truths. Doesn't matter if the field is there or not, or if it is varying or not, just the pressure acting on that element is always sigma square by two epsilon. So DF electrostatic pressure into area sigma square by two epsilon into DS and the vertical components will cancel out. So horizontal components will remain, which means force is DF cos theta. So horizontal component is cos theta. So DS will write for the ring two pi r sine theta into rd theta and sigma square we will put as sigma naught square cos square theta. So if you take the constants out inside, you'll be left, left with sine theta, cos cube theta, d theta. 
so if you do the substitution cos theta as dt you will get this in the form of t cube dt and integral of that will be t4 by 4 minus so if you put cos theta back and integrate it from 0 to pi by 2 you will get the answer sigma naught square pi r square by 4 epsilon